And good evening, ESS Empire State Sports Prairie presents the Wise Guy Sports Talk Show. Your host tonight, Joey Riom, Dave Barlett, myself, Pete Goslaw. And our very special guest tonight, Francesco Palumbo. Did I say it right? You got it right. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to call you Fran from now on. I, I'm sorry. I, I'll screw it up. I really will. So just to let everybody know, uh, World infamous, well, to, to us anyway, did a little uh, a video of uh, that anybody can watch on uh, YouTube. We will also post that tonight, or when we post this, we'll post your video also along with it so everybody can, can watch. And the and uh, it's called the Bodacious Bears, and it's all about the Potsdam State Bears uh, and Jerry Walsh's crew over there and uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit about that because you're you're looking at three guys that were raised in the north country and always went to potsdam state and love the bears we love jerry welch we've had jerry on the program and um what's gonna be nice is you're gonna you're gonna tell us the behind the scenes stuff that went on to uh you know basically make that that uh a film so Francesco, for anybody that doesn't know you, can you just give us, easy Dave, can you just give us a little uh, background or bio about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a Canton native, born and raised. I came through the Canton Central program playing baseball, basketball, and soccer. Had some great coaches over there at the Canton Central Districts. Um, from there, I did undergrad at SUNY Canton, so I stayed in the area um, and played baseball there while doing the sport management program. And in the last year, I graduated from UMass doing my master's in business and a master's in science and sport management. So I came back here. Now I'm working with the Lake Placid Olympic Committee uh, for the World University Games and also working on this documentary, which you we were just talking about. Uh, go ahead, Pete. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just, go ahead. Um, Francesco, talk a little bit before we dive into the documentary. Talk a little bit about uh, about your time in, in high school, with some of your coaches, and the fact that uh, I thought I saw your name kicking around uh, uh, social media posts and Facebook or paper newspaper clippings. Uh, Do you help out coaching baseball this spring? Yeah, I actually just coached uh, modified baseball this season with Coach Mendy. He's he's in his last season, so I gave him a hand with that, and he coached me back in the day, which was a full circle moment there with with him and uh, such a great group of kids. We just uh, finished a 12 and 0 season. So that was a pretty unique experience as well, but um, played baseball for him, for coach Caulfield, um, basketball with coach Porter, uh, soccer with coach Caulfield. So, I mean, <laughs> some, some great coaches to learn from and just have experiences playing in the North country. And honestly, that's where a lot of the, the documentary ties into a lot of those experiences here, here in the North country. And uh, the rivalries, getting to know other coaches, other players. So that's that's really special. What year did you graduate from Canton? I graduated in 2014. 2014. Mm -hmm. So you remember playing against me then? I do, yes. <laughs> and I ripped your heart out. I don't know about that. I think we beat you in the, uh, the Lisbon tournament <laughs> once. And then, yeah. and then we, I had got some, we had some really good games, though. Yeah, we did. We did have some good games. That's true. Um, but yeah, I remember if you only played for Coach Porter, I just said 2013, my, uh, mm -hmm. we won the Class C championship. We yeah, you did. Yeah. Yep. In a good, in a good close ball game, classic, uh, low scoring affair. So, yep. Um, we'll talk a little bit about, uh, I guess my, my first question when it comes to the Bodacious Bears is where, where'd you get the idea from? Where, where, what what drove you to this? So it's funny you just mentioned that championship game. I mean, we all experience Maxi Hall when it's like that. If you get to the the region, the sectional championships and everything like that in the playoffs for Section 10. Um, but it was originally kind of pitched to me as a part of this this project. Um, Randy Siminski is the athletic director over at SUNY Canton. And I worked with him through my years there, um, doing a lot of video editing and stuff like that. But his friend, Tim Dempsey, um, they went to high school together at Potsdam. And so they were very familiar with that whole storyline and, and just being around that on a daily basis, just going to all the games and um, falling in love with 
just everything that Coach Walsh and those players did and looking up to them. Um, but Tim Dempsey, he works over in the New Hampshire area now, um, and he was looking for somebody to help make this project come alive. He saw the, the Jordan documentary, and obviously knowing what the history is behind this program, knew that there was something to be told here. So he came to me, and um, from there we just had a meeting and, and really kicked it off in terms of the ideas and, and trying to make it come to life. Where'd you come up with the name Bodacious? I understand the Bears thing, of course, but uh, that's quite interesting. So it obviously grabbed your attention, the name itself. Um, but in terms of the era, there's a lot that comes from just the time period and uh, some of the unique things. So there's a clip that kind of kicks things off with Keanu Reeves describing what Bodacious means from that, from that movie he was in, um, Bill and Ted. Um, but I think it's, an, it's a word that's kind of specific to that era as well. It was pretty popular then. And the alliteration with bears, um, it just kind of grabs your attention and summarizes like all the adjectives that you can kind of put together in terms of the SUNY Pots and Bears basketball program. I know we've had a lot of the, a lot of our guests from that, that documentary you did. We've had quite a few of them already on the show, which is nice, including the big cheese himself, of course. Uh, and how did you, how did you interview Jerry? Did you, you must have done some homework on Jerry prior to, to uh, doing this. Definitely did a lot of homework. And then again, we've done probably 30 interviews to date at least. Um, so just between the research I've done and getting to know all the characters that are involved with this story, you, you really get a great understanding of, of who he is. But then when you actually get a chance to talk to him, it's just that much more special. And so um, Coach Mitchell and I went down at the beginning of May together um, to North Carolina, met with Jerry and spent a couple of days with him. He took us through Duke and everything like that, where he's currently working. And I mean, in terms of his energy and stamina, he was right there with us and you could tell he brought his energy for us. It was, it was a really a special experience. Yeah. One thing we found out, of course, we've always known this Jerry has a zest for life. And uh, especially when he steps on a basketball court, you can always see he has just that he just goes that step or that little plateau further and anytime he wants to talk basketball, and we learned that during our interview with him, he really brings his A game. So you must have found that real pleasant. I mean, that he opened open arms to uh, interview him. Oh, it was, it was really amazing. And when we actually went to Duke, one of the cool things was that he teaches a class over there. So at the Duke facilities, they have like a hall of fame, which we walk through and stuff like that. And for each different team, for example, the golf team, he knew, pretty much all of the, the members of the golf team who wins the national championship pretty often over there. He knew a lot of the basketball players who were in his classes and he could tell you very specific characteristics and personality traits of all of them. And, um, but the cooler thing about that was that it trickles down to not just all these top level athletes or all the amazing people he works with on a regular basis. He treats you like that too. And everything, every interaction you have with him is it makes you feel special, which is, I mean, very humbling. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that nobody that you've reached out to declined to be interviewed for this show. So this hasn't really been announced yet, but nobody's been declining any interviews. And one of those interviews um, stems from the from the North Carolina region as well, and that's uh, Coach K. So this is the official announcement, I guess, that there is video of Coach K, and he's got a five minute clip. Um, speaking very very highly of jerry and awesome. all of his accomplishments so that was very special to see awesome mm -hmm. um I, and i'm sure jerry's uh, I, maybe just in conversation or maybe you even have this uh in, in some point of the documentary but one of the things jerry told tells me all the time told us on our show all the time he, he reaches out to all of his players on a constant basis he talks to steve babiars once a month uh, at minimum once a month. So uh, that's why when I started thinking about this, I mean, it, you probably could have reached out to anybody that was connected with him and they would have wanted to to talk and, and help you out with this project. That's exactly how I saw it. I mean, we were just talking about the different people that were 
throughout his career and he could tell you exactly what they're doing or um it was it was insane honestly just to be able to read off a name off of my list and he could tell you exactly what they're doing what their career's been like um so yeah like you said he stays right up to touch with them and it, those relationships mean everything to to him and everyone around him did was there a lot of uh I don't want to get too nosy about this, but was there a lot of expense and in traveling involved for you other than, I mean, obviously you went down to see Jerry, but uh, how did you get most of your interviews? Yeah. So I can't stress this enough. Tim Dempsey is the man in terms of making all this happen and possible. Um, he, he reached out to me and told me whatever you need to do, let's make it happen. And that includes the travel down and stuff like that. It's, it can't be stated enough how important he has been to this. And really, it's pretty much his idea. So I'm just the gear trying to make it happen. And everybody, like you said, is just so eager to help out any way they can. And that's also a, a big part of the community that he's built around him. Um, so how, how long, I mean, from... In, if from the time it was in your head to where we are now, how long have we been working on this? So the first time I was in conversation was last December. So it was like kind of the middle of the pandemic. Um, the true extent of what we could do wasn't necessarily known. We thought a lot of it would have to be on Zoom. And fortunately, we've avoided that. Um, so we have pretty much, like I said, over 30 interviews in person, um, well over an hour each for the most part. Um, and so it's like a year and a half, at least now at this point of traveling and getting these interviews done and, um, researching and everything like that. But now we've gotten to the point where we kind of have the storyline in place and, um, all the narration points that we're trying to hit. So it's, it's probably going to be about an hour and a half to two hours long when it's all said and done. And we've got about 45 minutes so far edited. So that's where we're at. Uh, that was my next question was, uh, yeah, what, what's the duration of this? But you just, you just said it. Mm -hmm. but, the, but people don't know that what, in the background, how many hours you actually put in this. And then you have to edit it and chop, you know, crop and chop things. So how many, how many hours total you think you're going to have before you even start editing? Must be, I mean, in probably days worth. I was, yeah, I was just looking at some file sizes and stuff like that for reference, but. I don't think I could honestly tell you how many hours purely there are. I mean, I have a whole stack of DVDs of footage in terms of the 1980s basketball games. Um, I have stuff on YouTube that I've still got to go through and, and look through. There are people reaching out from all over the place with, with footage, some cool stuff in the archives and some sources that have still yet to be tapped. So I couldn't honestly tell you how many sources or the amount of hours that we have in the archives at the moment. And are you still adding? Um, I'm trying to be a little bit more hesitant to adding right now, just because we have a really good foundation of stuff. And um, like I said, I want to make sure I'm, I'm getting everything I can out of what I do have. So, um, but we are open to, to people's archives if they have special footage that they know um, exactly where it is and how, how they can locate it. Definitely open to that. And we could also think about putting together some, some quick clips for the end as well. So if people want to contribute something at the end, that's also an option that we're kind of thinking about it too. I mean, in, in watching the trailer, just, you know, some of the faces that, because the trailer is just little pieces of this and that, but some of the names and some of the people in the trailer alone, just I'm like, man, I can't, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, when you see really all the different people who are involved and how eager they were to help out, that's just, what really makes it special and knowing that um that that line runs deep and those people are in jerry's corner and he's in theirs so that's uh, what it's so, all about yeah like joey said i can't imagine anybody that would first off have a have a bad thing to say about jerry welsh and or you know let alone turn down and inter you know be in being interviewed about him mm -hmm. I, i'll be uh when when you finally get this release now um so when you do release it, what's the avenue that we're going to be looking to watch it? Is this something you're, it, again, if, if this is too nosy, but is this something you're looking to sell 
make some money off of it? Or is this just, I, I'm, I, I want to make a documentary. I'm trying to prove myself. Is this something you want to do down the line? Uh, or is this just a one-time thing? I mean, what, what's, I mean, what's going on in Francesco Palumbo, the director's career going? So that's a really great question. And we always thought of it as something that needs to have everybody involved. And so part of the idea that I'm, I'm kind of still developing and trying to put a little more solid date in terms of the, the finish line for is having some kind of idea where we have like a, a release party at either Roxy Theater or over at um, Potsdam and having as many alumni come back as possible, having Jerry come up hopefully for it, having his family, Tim Welsh and um, everyone from the North Carolina uh, region there. Um, and just, again, it's this, this story, when you really see it and think about it, it's about the community. It's about the people who were a part of it. And event with a, a premiere of some sort. And that's kind of what's in my mind and producing these DVDs as well to, to kind of get there so that the people can have it for a long term as a hard copy um, and really doing a good job with it in terms of the, the credits, the titling and everything. Um, and uh, to answer your question on top of that, it's all going to be produced and done legally. So that's another step in, in the direction that we're going for. We're having uh, Kyle Tupper, who is a local musician, graduated from Potsdam as well, um, working on some of the music stuff and trying to get some other licensing things going with some songs that we're looking at as well. So but as far as all this background stuff, not, not the actual interviews and all those things, but when it comes to the, like, so the editing and, and all these things, th this is all you. It's not like you have a crew of people working on and, and you're, you're getting help, but you're the one making that happen. Right. Yeah. In terms of the editing and everything like that, I never really got the full understanding of why the cast let it, the cast letters are so long, but it makes sense now <laughs> they have, <laughs> a lot of people who are needed to make these things happen and it's it's just been me for pretty much all of it so i definitely have gotten a, a deeper appreciation for that well the, the whole thing sounds uh it, it, you know we, when we saw the trailer um got very excited about the about the whole thing so uh when we get to see this finished product i think it's going to be awesome um you know, now that I think about it, you, I get to play golf now uh, every year with uh, Jerry's, a lot of Jerry's former players, thanks to Coach Myrna, uh, who's included me in on that. And it, I just, it, it's just an awesome day of just going out and listening to stories. And then uh, you were there last year, we were at St. Lawrence University Golf Club. And uh, I think you were there, you were getting some interviews from some people. But uh, Jerry called while we were all there to make sure that he bought us all a drink. Uh, and he was just adamant that that was going to happen um, because they were having credit card issues with his credit card. <laughs> he was so worried that we weren't going to get our one drink from, from him. And uh, but but to, to sit there uh, as a 50, I'm 52 years old, Francesco. And again, Pete and I were about the same age and we grew up in those eighties. We were at Maxie hall in those days, um, to be able to sit there and listen to his former players, uh, talk about him and revere him. Um, and to go out and play golf with those guys. Uh, they, they love that man. Um, and I, and I am sure that you have seen that come, uh, from every interview that you have, the, the appreciation and the love for, for Jerry Welch. Yeah, definitely. And you, you spoke of the golf outing. I mean, that just by itself, how many, how many basketball programs can say that 40 years later that they have so many alumni coming back and, and really supporting and just sticking together through the years. Um, but besides that, I've, I've been on a few Zoom calls with, for example, Coach Welch's birthday was in March and they had – dozens and dozens of players joining that just to talk to him. And, 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 and he had a great opportunity to share some stories there, but seeing all the, the community and like, anytime you mentioned the storyline or anything that was going on, people like, like you guys were fans. And um, it just means that much to know that it, 
it's definitely caught the attention to, to make something like this happen, which is even more motivating to, to you know, keep, keep plugging away. Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. I was a little disappointed uh, was that the trailer was only six minutes and 20 seconds long because I'm sitting there going, it's over already? I was so, it, was, it was that good. Um, I, I wanted more. So you got our attention. So it, anybody that gets teased, I, I don't think it's going to take much to tease people with that trailer, to be honest with you. So I, I think I think an hour and a half or two hours, whatever you're going to do, people are going to be glued to their seats, especially the ones that grew up through that era and saw all of that happen. Yeah, to, to a couple points there, I definitely was trying to balance between making sure it was short enough to keep people's attention, but also not too long where... Uh, people were like, well, this is basically the movie as it is. But, uh, but like you said, once you start seeing those names and I mean, it's literally character after character and story after story that just engages you and each person is, is so special to it and they have their own way of telling it. But the other thing is like, you can hear as many stories as you want, but to, to actually see this in, in a way where it's tying these stories into the footage that we have in the archives it's really, really amazing because you're hearing stories about toilet paper be being thrown on, onto the court. And then there's actually video of it. Something that I, I was like, oh, maybe there's a few strands of paper or something getting thrown out yeah. there. But no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's wild. Yeah, a then, few strands. <laughs> no, I mean, like, there was a I, it was I a wasn't paper, there. <laughs> but the COVID to, toilet paper shortage was, uh, <laughs> they were looking back at that saying, oh, now we know why there's a shortage. <laughs> <laughs> the supply chain was about 40, 40 years late. That's why. Yeah. But yeah, to, to see the footage going along with it. And really, again, when you're hearing these stories, it's not embellished at all. This is, this is special stuff. Well, and it's going to be great because uh, again, you know, Pete and Dave and I, we've done about 110 of our shows. I, I'm going to guess 20 to 30 of them are SUNY Yak basketball related or Potsdam State Bear related. And we always talk about what you just talked about. <laughs> the, the, the spoons, the yeah. toilet paper, the newspapers, the, the, the newspapers, yeah. fans holding the newspapers when they're announcing the other, you know, we saw it. And, uh, you know, to think that it's going to get relived a little bit with these three guys that you're talking to are pretty excited and can't wait for that to, uh, uh, for that moment when we can see this whole thing yeah and again to think again back to like even a section 10 championship where the gym is packed over at maxi this is 10 times that with a with a college crowd involved the, the communities involved i mean people were ecstatic to be there and to to cheer those bears on for every game every game i was just gonna say you're young you're you're too young to actually to have been there and experienced it but guys like this that were there that experienced it, and now they're watching this, then we're watching this, it just brings, it gets the blood boiling, boiling again and excited to the point that, man, I remember that. I mean, I, I was there. And it's in the hair of my back and back of my neck just stands right up on some of those things, and I can't wait to see the whole thing. I really can't. Like I said, a damn six minutes that's a tease that's a terrible tease but it, it got my interest i'll tell you that well as i'm thinking a uh, ess remote broadcast uh when the uh when it's unveiled that would be great yeah a, a, a live stream I mean, for for I mean, people just all over the ourselves you know but <laughs> no, yeah, yeah you guys you guys definitely have a, have an invite whenever we get that set that is awesome just make sure it's done before november Oh yeah, we're that's part of the planning. We're trying to get it done um, sometime in the early fall. That way, when students are coming back to campus, we could probably set something up and, and make sure, like freshmen, they know what SUNY Potsdam is all about and nice. that culture that that was once there, and um, really making sure that they know how special that tradition is when when it comes to it. Is your goal to be done this year, or or I, I mean, oh, you are? Yeah, I'm trying to be done um, by the fall for for those reasons and again um i know it's it's a sad part of it but uh recently we lost ted bentz a couple weeks ago and um it kind of hits you with the reality of of the situation these these people are getting older and um i would have loved to have had that out and make sure ted ted knew everything that was going on into it and i was in touch with him pretty closely 
um, special guy and, and really formed a friendship with him in terms of just how great of a guy he was and really caring. But again, that extends to, to all the players of the program. So um, I'm trying to get it done for, for the sake of that and making sure um, it's all encapsulated for, for them to see. Well, we would be honored to go up there and, and interview people on the floor. We done, we did that with the Stanley Cup when it came north uh, to uh, Brazier Falls, and, and uh, we were lucky enough to have set up shop right there, literally 20 feet from the cup, and we interviewed all day. We had a rolling, and we would love to do that again, especially in Maxie Hall, which is very near and dear to all of us. So. Uh, we, we would love, we would love to do that. Uh, so, uh, see if, see what you can do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you guys have the connections with, with all the school districts. So even tying them in, I mean, it adds another layer to, to just going to Maxi and, and having a chance to play there, but to, to know the history that goes on behind it and to really the heights that, that can be reached there. Uh, and guess what, Francesco, free of charge. You, you won't have to pay us a thing. We'll do, we'll no, come yeah. and do it. Yeah. Nothing. We'll, that would be awesome. <laughs> we pretty much do all this for nothing. So. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I watch these episodes and love to hear the, the history. And the, again, when you look at this story, it really touches to everything that you guys do. And um, I appreciate what you, what you do to, to keep these stories alive and make sure people know, because I mean, the basketball camps that, that Coach Welsh really started, it's created a culture around the North Country and it still lives on today because, you know, that those coaches, that coaching tree, um, it's deeply rooted. Well, Francesco, that was part of the reason why I tried to, to get you on here because you are uh, the epitome of what Dave and Pete and I are trying to do with just our little show. You, you're, you're focusing in on one topic, but it's, but it's North Country related. It's going to hit home uh, to a lot of people. Um, and that's what Dave and Pete and I are trying to do with just – with just this little thing is, is give those people in the North country a chance to see and hear, uh, see somebody and hear the stories that, that made uh, so many things great when it came to the world of sports and uh, up here in the North country. So um, this is great what you're doing. And, you know, I, I also think uh, I'll be interested, you know, you mentioned coach K I'll be interested to see how, how far reaching this goes for you. Um, because, you know, I remember days, I do remember some days in the late 80s. I remember, like, just listening to a ESPN D1 game, probably Syracuse game, and Dick Vitale just mentioning Jerry Welch on air. And I would, like, wow, Dick Vitale just mentioned Potsdam State and Jerry Welch, you know. Yep. I, somebody like Dick Vitale is going to probably watch this. Uh, th there were Division One guys or big-time guys that knew what Jerry was doing at the D3 level. Um I, I'd be interested to see the kind of kickback you get back, uh, feedback you get back from some bigger names. Yeah, I, I won't spoil too much because we do have some stuff in the pipelines and uh, working some other things out. But, for example, a couple of weeks ago, Hal Cohen was up in the area and he's somebody else you see in the North Country with the, the 598 free throws. He went on to, to play at Syracuse under Coach Beheim in his first season. So I'll tell you one story real quick. But he, when he first got to Syracuse, it was Coach Beheim's first season there. And officially or unofficially, somewhere in between, he became Coach Beheim's first recruit. So he's got that kind of under his belt, just so to, to kind of put things in perspective of the era and kind of where everything's come to at this point. But that's a special one to hear. And when you see it all put together in, in this storyline and how Hal and his, his dad were related to the program, um, it's, it's special. We, we, glad Gary's first recruit. I didn't know that. Well, so he was technically recruited under the, the coach Not before. Jerry, Jim, or, yeah. yeah, Hal. And the story is that in order to keep him at Syracuse, Coach Beheim needed to confirm that he wanted to still come with a new coach. And so Coach Beheim gave him a call and said, do you want to still play at Syracuse? And he said, yes. And so that was the official first signing, I guess, of, okay. of Coach Beheim. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we've had Hal on the show. And then also, obviously, uh, Tim Welsh went on to help coach um, coach, Beheim, coach with Coach Beheim over at Syracuse. Yeah. And he went on to a tremendous career in the Division One ranks. And there are other stories and individuals who have done some similar things like that, too. Mike Dean, for example. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. But okay. I know we've had quite a few of the people that were that you've already, you know, in the teaser, uh, we already had quite a few of them on that program. So to, it must have been, I can't imagine sitting there across from Coach K and, and actually interviewing him. Uh, that would that would be awesome. I mean, my, my I, growing up, we we're, we're, we're all we're all Syracuse D one fans at one one time or another, and Jim Jim Beheim is what I would love to interview Jim Beheim. Uh, Joey and I did a broadcast down there one year where his daughter was playing ball in a championship against Malone at uh, was Onondaga, and uh, we got to meet him after the game it was short and sweet, but I can't imagine on a level of interviewing coach K and I know you don't want to let the coat, you know, the cat out of the bag, but can you give us a little teaser on that interview? I don't know how much I can tease from that uh, one. But I know I'm putting on the spot. I've already teased enough on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I just there's, just there's mention the name. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are others of that same stature. Um, and another story I can't share that that's been shared several times. So I think it's, it's kind of one of those common ones, but for example, coach K, Jim Beheim, uh, Jim Calhoun, Jerry and Tim, I think they were all at Tim's wedding, um, a while back and the questions going around, I wonder who the best coach is here. And Jim Beheim looks over and points at coach Welsh and says, that's Jerry Welsh and he's the best coach here. So really that's, that's the reverence that they have for him as, as a coach. And again, the, the relationships just add that extra layer to it. It's not just something that they're saying. It's not just um, fabricated in any way. Like when you see all of it put together, it makes it such a amazing experience to see. Well, you know, Pete, Dave, uh, you know, we've never really talked about this. Think about it though. Bayheims took over in 1977. He's coaching in Syracuse with a Division Three power just a few hours north of him. He had to have known who, who Jerry was at the time that Jerry was accomplishing the things he was accomplishing. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah, there, so. we've talked about it a few, a little bit. Um, there were definitely people who were looking at going to Syracuse and they ended up at Potsdam. I mean, they, he had Division One talent at a Division Three school, and yeah. a lot of people might just say that but it was it was legit i mean derek Rowlands. oh yeah um he speaks for himself right there i mean uh, to win Re brandon, titles, brandon mitchell have, brandon mitchell yeah, yeah. To, to win national titles you have to have above average division three talent you know mm -hmm. above the average of what division three has nationwide so yeah he definitely had some division one talent Well, Francesco, uh, I, I don't know how much longer we go in here, but I, I just want to say, I, I, you know, you got the juices flowing and I, I can't wait to see this thing. And uh, here's hoping this summer uh, the the little group gets together again at the golf course. Maybe I can bump into you there with uh, with more stories. And, um, and when the day comes, uh, we would love to be there in any capacity uh, if you'd have us. And uh, oh, for sure. Uh, it would, it would be great. Uh, it would be an honor to, to be able to, to be there that day when, when you release uh, the Bodacious Bears. Well, thank you for the support. And again, thanks for having me. I know if, if you do have the, the means to do so, and I know you're an administrator over there, but if you want to get a group of, of students going and um, we'd love to have anybody over here as, as we can make it happen. I don't, I don't think you're going to have a problem packing that place. No, I don't, I don't think so either, but. We've been there for, pro, for the, the big games before in Boston. They're, they line up out the road, yeah. I mean, into the parking lot. So just to, to bring this and bring all the people back for that, uh, I, I don't think you know what you're in for. I really, well, I really don't. Yeah, Make putting it, it on people's radar at least, and, and making sure people know it's it's happening in order to experience something like that with hopefully coach or some of the players coming back and, and seeing it back here at forty years after the fact. That's really what it's about, and making sure that everybody knows. Yeah, I think at the Roxy you would have to have multiple uh, <laughs> showings to get. Yeah, so you might want to have it on Maxi. 
Yeah, might over, might be over at Maxi. Yeah. yeah. Well, Francesco, it's been it's been a blast. I mean, uh, we, we we're glad you came on the show. Uh, we can't wait to see the final outcome and the final project. Um, like I said, the teaser was enough to get us our blood boiling, and uh, we, we appreciate you coming on the show. Maybe we can have you on a little bit closer again uh, to when you uh, are about to. Uh, put it out how's that that would be great yeah to, to come back and give you a little bit more of an update on things and maybe another spoiler here or there hey sounds fantastic <laughs> fantastic thank you again for coming on the program awesome thank you so much guys that's gonna be it here on ess empire state sports and the wise guys sports talk show for joy realm dave bell and myself pete gosa and francesco palumbo good night everybody stay safe <laughs>